True or false, tap water is routinely tested and filtered to remove contamination from livestock and pesticides. Although most Americans surveyed, 59%, think this statement is true, the correct answer is false. Of course, water is routinely tested by water utilities, but most water treatment systems lack the technology to filter out these pollutants and numerous other chemicals and chlorine-resistant microorganisms. It seems like a simple question to ask, how good is the water? But the answer is far from simple. Water quality depends on how a water body is used. Water that may meet standards for industrial use might be unfit for drinking, swimming, or fishing. State governments are responsible for implementing water quality standards in the U.S. based on guidance published by the EPA. And the guidance is extensive, with over 150 priority pollutants and numerous other quality factors such as color, hardness, pH, and temperature. Drinking water is a special use category covered by a second set of regulations and guidelines. The EPA maintains a list of over 90 drinking water contaminants. And, as this graph shows, the number of contaminants regulated under the Safe Drinking Water Act has increased a lot over the past quarter century. The total rose from 22 in 1976 to 91 by the year 2001. Later in this lesson, you'll learn how to investigate the quality of water in your community. True or false, insecticides occur more frequently and usually at higher concentrations in urban streams than in agricultural streams. The correct answer is true. USGS water quality studies have found widespread distributions of insecticides and herbicides in urban watersheds. This includes pesticides like DDT and chlordane, which have been banned for decades, but were detected more frequently in sediments of urban streams than agricultural streams. But those aren't the only contaminants the USGS found. Contamination by sewage, both human and animal, frequently exceeds recommended standards for water contact recreation. Phosphate concentrations are generally as high in urban streams as in agricultural streams. High phosphorus levels can accelerate algal growth in surface waters, which depletes dissolved oxygen in the water, killing many forms of aquatic life. Volatile organic compounds, which are used in plastics, cleaning solvents, gasoline, and industrial operations, have entered many urban groundwater systems. Concentrations of trace elements like mercury, zinc, lead, and cadmium are also elevated in urban areas. Many of these come from motor vehicle emissions, but 87% of mercury emissions come from industrial sources, like coal-fired power plants, which produce over half of America's electricity. Do Americans know where most of their water pollution comes from? A national survey of environmental knowledge posed the following question. What is the most common cause of pollution of streams, rivers, and oceans? What percentage of Americans was able to answer this question correctly? The correct answer is 28%. Relatively few Americans understand that precipitation runoff from farms, lawns, and paved surfaces is the leading source of water pollution in America today. Nearly half, 45% of respondents, thought the main source is waste dumped by factories. Although municipal facilities and factories are still significant contributors to water pollution, they are no longer the leading cause as they were in the 1960s and 1970s. The Clean Water Act of 1972 was largely successful in reducing water pollution from specific point sources. Today, non-point source or NPS pollutants are the largest causes of impairments to state water quality standards and can affect drinking water quality. With tongue-in-cheek, you could say that most water pollution today is pointless. NPS pollutants can't be traced to specific industrial sources. Instead, they are spread broadly over ground surfaces throughout a region. Most NPS pollutants enter our watersheds when precipitation runoff or snowmelt picks up these pollutants and carries them into surface water bodies or groundwater reservoirs. Some of the main NPS pollutants are excess fertilizers, herbicides, and insecticides from agricultural lands and residential areas, oil, grease, and toxic chemicals from urban runoff, sediment from improperly managed construction sites, croplands, and forests, 
salt from irrigation practices and road treatments, bacteria and nitrogen-rich effluent from livestock, pet wastes, and faulty septic systems, and deposition of atmospheric pollutants onto land and water surfaces. Since ground and surface water form an interconnected system, pollutants at the surface can enter the groundwater. Contaminated groundwater can also resurface at a later time and a different location. Croplands, industrial discharge lagoons, leaking underground storage tanks, cesspools and septic tanks, and landfills can all be sources of groundwater contamination. Once surface contaminants reach the water table, their movement through and out of an aquifer can be very slow. This means it can take an extremely long time for a contaminated aquifer to be decontaminated. And when that aquifer is a source of drinking water, an alternative water source may be difficult to find or much more expensive. Since most water pollution comes from non-point sources, improving water quality really comes down to individual actions. That's why your role as a broadcast meteorologist is so important. You can make a huge difference in your community by educating your viewers about water pollution caused by everyday activities. Here's a list of simple do's and don'ts you could promote on the air. Never dump oil, antifreeze, pesticides, paints, or other chemicals into storm drains. Wash your car at commercial car washes to prevent wastewater flowing directly into storm drains. Or wash your car in grassy areas where water will infiltrate back into the soil. Keep your car tuned and fix any oil or transmission leaks. Minimize use of de-icing products. Drive less. Dispose of pet waste in the garbage or flush it down the toilet. Instead of harsh chemical herbicides and pesticides, consider hand-pulling weeds and using organic controls. If you do use chemicals, don't over-apply. Never spray near ditches, lakes, or streams. Spray on windless days and not before or during rain. Help restore your local groundwater supply by capturing rainwater in a rain garden. And finally, join your local watershed group. There are thousands of voluntary community organizations across the country working to protect and restore rivers, streams, wetlands, lakes, groundwater, and estuaries. Visit the EPA's Adopt Your Watershed website to find out what's going on in your area.